America, also known as Glimpen in Instagram and DeviantArt. So after much delivery and thought from my part and much insistence from you guys, I decided to finally open my YouTube channel. In this channel, I hope to share all my tips and tricks on how I create my artwork and hopefully it will help you in some way. I've tried to do this in my Instagram with stories and all that, but I never show my face because apparently I'm a little bit shy. Hi. But here I will just go for it and see what happens, okay? So let's get started. We're gonna do a speed paint today of something organic because it's easier for me to show you my process and the layers that I use and how I use them with something complicated and at the same time something that everyone has seen, okay? So we're gonna paint a forest. So let's get started. Okay, so for this we're gonna need a few things. We need a graphic tablet, we need internet access to search for references, and we need a software. In this case, I'm gonna be using Photoshop which is the program that I've been using for the past 10 years. Anyway, so let's go do that. But first, I always put my hair back because it just gets in the way. Cool, so let's just get started. So now we're gonna search images. I'm gonna search in Spanish because, you know. I'm Mexican. So now we have our references. We're gonna go ahead and open a Photoshop file. It is important to know that the resolution of your image has to be higher than whatever Photoshop offers you at first. I always recommend between 200 and 300 px, okay? That's really important because if you want to upload your work to any platforms where you can sell them or share them, people can zoom in and you cannot put it in many products if you want to sell them in Redbubble or Society6 and it's just a mess. So I always recommend starting with 300 px resolution. Okay, so let's just get started and add the references right here and we're gonna use them for color dropping and just a reference in general in color composition and other stuff. Since I'm not really aware how the copyright thing works on YouTube, let's just imagine that I'm playing some really nice Led Zeppelin or some really nice Pink Floyd, okay? Before we do any strokes in the painting, it's always nice to think about the composition of the piece you're about to make. Have a general idea of what you're looking for before you start the process. It will be easier for everyone in the way. So, I am thinking of doing a forest with maybe a little path in the middle and just some bushes around. That's the image I have in my head. So the first step is very important and it's basically the trick on making a good speed paint. First we're gonna make a layer of color. We're not gonna think about detail, we're not gonna think about anything but composition and color. So we're just gonna paint the entire canvas with a color that we can use from the color picker and just select it from anywhere in the references. So using the color picker I'm just going to paint the entire canvas in a color. It is important not to leave any white spaces and just think this is only to show what composition you're aiming for. So just go ahead and go nuts with it. So we're looking for something as simple as what we just did. It's enough for me to understand what the composition is and enough for me to finally add the details that we all want to add. So after this is done, the next step is one of the most important ones. We're going to add perspective. And there's a very easy way to do that, just adding lines. You know, lines can show perspective because the closer they are to you, the bigger they are. So the next step is simply to add depth. And the way we're gonna do it is using Photoshop layers. I know it's a scary thing. I know many people don't like to use them because they don't know how they work. So we're gonna use specific layers today to show you how I use layers to create depth and just to add a little bit more into the piece itself. So if my light source is here, here, and here, what I'm gonna do is open a new layer and use the effect multiply. The whole point here is to give depth using light. So understanding they are plants, I'm gonna try that my hand motion. It's not like this, it's more like this. Like if you were drawing a cloud, okay? So the second layer we're gonna use is the layer with effect overlay. So we're gonna grab the lightest color in our composition and we're gonna open a new layer with the layer effect overlay. Great! So with that we already have a composition that has a light source and a little bit of depth and perspective. And now we can actually detail it, that is the most fun of all these things. We're just looking for these elements to have a texture. They don't have to look like plants, they have to feel like plants. So I'm just gonna fast forward a bit because if not, we're gonna be here the entire quarantine. So I highly recommend 
recommend that you switch brushes while you're doing this so it has more of an organic look so because if you don't it looks it just looks a little bit monotone we're going to do what we just did to the whole composition to every element in the composition so opening a new layer we're going to select the layer option multiply and just go nuts with every single element and we're going to do the same thing with the layer overlay now the next step is just detailing per element so this is the most fun part for me which is going to go nuts with creativity and using different types of brushes to create different types of effects now always remember where your light source is coming from because then it doesn't look like it belongs in the same universe so I'm just going to draw a few lines to help me remember where the light is coming from. Now we're going to use brushes that have to do more with the kind of elements that we're painting. In this case, it's organics, it's plants, it's bushes. So in the extensive world of the internet, as you guys probably know, there's thousands of brushes out there that emulate these kind of things. Use these brushes wisely. I've seen many people thinking this is just a shortcut from actually painting the element you are working on. Please don't use it like a stamp. It doesn't work, it doesn't look right, and we can totally tell it's not worked. It is also worth noting that laws of perspective apply in everything you paint. The closer an object is to you, the more specific and detailed it looks, and the further it is from you, it looks more blurred. It's just the way the human eye works. shouldn't be a pain in the neck, it should be fun. And think about it as therapy. So this is looking quite nice, huh? So now we're just gonna add some more elements that will show perspective. In this case, trees! Now it's time to do the details that make this come to life, you know? That special thing, that special taste we all have on where to put what and what element to add what, okay? So there's a fantastic little trick to add atmospheric perspective to your piece. So we're just going to go to filter, to blur, and to Gaussian blur. That will just make it lose all the detail possible and that works for us because it looks its own. Now, if you can tell, the floor doesn't look like it belongs in the same universe as the rest of the elements of the piece. And that is because it doesn't have any light effects coming from the other elements. Many people kind of don't do that that it just looks like two different elements in the same composition. So the easiest way to do this is just adding shadows. Just as a rule, any element or any new element that you add to your piece has to have an effect on the other elements or the entire piece. That was such a mouthful. Now, to unify the entire drawing, we're gonna do a little trick that I don't know if anybody else uses. This is not right or wrong, this is just the way that I do it. We're gonna use the layer option color to create one single atmosphere. And we're going to paint everything blue. Now, I want you to think about this as an animation cell. You know, there are different elements in an animation. We have the background, we have the main character, whatever action is happening, and we have the foreground. It's the same thing here. Apply that thought and that logic into your drawing. So the blue color is gonna make everything go cold, and the cold parts have to be the parts in the background. With purple, we're gonna paint the parts in the foreground. All these elements have to be in a warmer color. Then we're gonna grab a more Mexican color, I mean, it, it. We have a color called Mexican pink. And then we're gonna grab a warmer color, which would be, in this case, red. We lower the opacity and boom! Magically, everything belongs to the same atmosphere. You didn't have to paint anything, you didn't have to do anything. It's just a little trick for you. On the Copa, Copa Cabana. No, 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 no. I can't sing. I promised myself I wouldn't sing. I sing horrible. 
So the next step is to highlight the detail. Work it more, maybe add some brushes that have a little bit more specks, maybe a little bit more circles, and they just look more defined. The simplest way to paint a rock is to draw an oval and just cut it on the middle. Half of the shape is going to be shadow and the other half is going to be light. Now I want to paint something else, maybe a tree, but I'm afraid of it because it might not look good. And this is where the magic of digital art happens. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake or you don't like something that you did, you can simply just Ctrl C and erase it. That's the magic of it. So you should just take chances and just go for it. And if you don't like it, you can simply, again, Ctrl C. So I'm simply going to paint it and just do it and see what happens. I kind of digging this element here, I think it's giving really good contrast. Just adding more details and more stuff to make it seamless. Now, it happens very often, the ledger we just did with the color option, we need to put it back up and just change a few things because now we have another element in the piece. And just keep on detailing. I'm just gonna go in with more and more detail. Because as you may know, I am really into detail and I love to get to the very core of the painting. So we're only missing three things here right now. We're missing an element in the foreground that is going to make everything look way more deeper. Then we're gonna make shadows from the trees that we already painted. And lastly, we're gonna add way more intensity in terms of the light source. So first we're gonna start with the trees. Now we're gonna add the shadows. Now we're going to add the foreground element. There is a very simple and fun way to do this using the lasso tool. So using the lasso tool, we're going to draw these really organic leaf type figures in the edges of the piece. Then we add a filter with blur and Gaussian blur. And lastly, we're going to force the light source. And I love doing this small trick, which is painting the entire canvas black and erasing the parts where the light should be. And we highlight the light source. And last but not least, we sign our speed paint. Never, I mean never upload, not even a doodle to the internet without your signature. There's a lot of peace out there. The internet is dark and full of terrors. There, we finish our speed paint. Okay, so this was a tutorial slash speedpaint slash introduction to YouTube. Remember that the trick is that you can always get better in the next piece. There's always a second drawing. I know we're our worst critics, but we should also be our best cheerleaders. If you like the tutorial, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will be sharing a lot of tips, tricks, maybe doing challenges, testing Prismacolor colors, Copic markers, showing you specific stuff like how to paint hair, eyes, skin, and I would love to have you in the channel. Thank you so much for watching and for welcoming me into this awesome platform. If you have any doubt or any comment, please comment down below. And I will gladly answer any doubt you have. Bye guys!